Hey everybody, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. I am out here in Utah at the Waldorf Astoria in Park City. We're out here to rebuild a water feature. They had an existing water feature here put in several years ago and definitely didn't say professional at all. It's kind of nasty. Uh, I think it leaked quite a bit. Greg came out here with a few other CACs, certified Aquascape contractors, and they ripped it out. We're here to uh, finish it off. So today we have to do some damage control. So even though Greg came out and did a lot of prep work, got the thing ripped out, the new pond excavated, the intake bay excavated, aqua blocks and stuff put in. From my understanding, the whole thing heaved up out of the ground. Uh, there wasn't water put into the aqua blocks. They got a ton of rain and that water got underneath the liner and caused those aqua blocks to heave up out of the ground. So today we're gonna spend the day fixing that stuff. And then tomorrow, I think there's 30 contractors here to help us put this thing back together. So today is all damage control. Here we go. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. All right, so it begins. Greg Whitstock, the pond guy here, and I am with Living Artscapes and the Utah Pond Guy and the three companies, my company, these two guys' companies, we are going to be demoing today. Well, it almost kind of looks demo, doesn't it? A old pondless waterfall that we are going to simply rip out, and then we are going to be taking out this pond that has been semi-functioning and not functioning for the last eight years. It's been an eyesore up here here at the front of this incredible Waldorf Astoria. And you can see that this pond has become overgrown with cattails. All of the water goes underneath the rocks. So we are gonna be ripping this out, ripping this out. We gotta drain the water down, which is what we're gonna do right now. Catch the goldfish. There's about uh, two dozen goldfish somewhere in this murky water. Rip out the old aquascape skimmer that some contractor, we do not know who built this. So today, this is going to be our process. Demoing all of this in preparation for Utah Monium. And Utah Monium is our first annual training event in my new hometown, Heber City, Utah. We're in Park City, Utah, my next door neighbors. And I am going to be teaching a class with Ed Ballou, the pond professor, and a bunch of certified aquascape contractors and guys who want to become certified on how to build ponds properly. So, so many times I see water features in public displays that aren't built using the 20 product, 20 step methodology that aquascape has taught. And then if they are built with our products, they're maybe not aesthetically pleasing. So you are going to see quite the transformation in this water feature because for me, for years, I have been coming here and seeing this and wanting to repair it. And we finally got together with the Waldorf, finally created a training event around here. And we are going to be completely making this thing a beautiful aquascape ecosystem functioning water feature. And the thing that's most exciting about getting a public display that's done right for customers to see is also the fact that we're gonna have this thing run year round. So the amount of aqua blocks that we are gonna use in this, building it properly, this kind of an eyesore right now is gonna become a beautiful aquascape ecosystem water feature. So Frank, what do you think? It's the atypical Utah waterfall. <laughs> it's uh, dumped rocks with a garden hose over the top <laughs> and a pump thrown near the bottom. And uh, they call these water features out here. Well, we're about to change it, that's for sure. What year did you build this? <laughs> oh no, this is uh, Dan Foot. He did this. Him and Tony Burnett. They put this together. All right. Out with the old, in with the new. Not just the water, but the entire thing. So just taking out all the rocks one by one until the machine gets going. But there are fish. Oh, there's, there's a fish. There are fish in there. So Mark, do we have the, are we gonna start filling up the? It's full. Fill up the tub, good. One step ahead of me, I love it. Working with certified contractors. So we got our aeration stones that we're gonna plug in and uh, all those fish are going there to a new home. And this is gonna be a new pond pretty soon. All right, catch in between, between the cattails. This is why you don't wanna put cattails in a pond because this is what they look like after a few years. So we're catching the goldfish and we're bringing them right over to a temporary holding tank and then we are going to rehouse them somewhere. So that's it. All right, we're getting you a new home, buddy. Smells 
so bad. All that anaerobic bacteria. fish that we were able to save are in there. Finding an odd fish now and again, unfortunately, just part of the collateral damage. But you can see it's now been two hours and you can see what we have actually been able to accomplish so far. It's a big pile of dirt. We got the stuff going to the dump. We got our buddy JR, Sergio, JR's landscaping helping us out. And now we're just trying to pull out some of the stones to reuse and then the rest of the stuff's going to the dump. So we are now three hours in and we have an entire load to take to the dump. All of the spoils pretty much now besides a few little hand pick things we'll just be digging out the dirt and moving some of the spoils for the dirt but this is going to the dump all right starting the area for the retaining wall got the pond that we need to clean up and then we're going to start digging out this area down there for the aqua block building a weir flap over so i'm going to get some timbers right now where all the aqua blocks will grow. The line will come up and over of a spillway, falling into the lower basin, and that will allow this to run year round, even in the winter time. There's my office for the day, my man. Not a bad view. Whip it out the pond at the Waldorf Astoria. I love my job. So how big is our basin gonna be? Six by nine. By five feet deep? Five feet deep. Okay, so that's the cistern down here. Six feet by nine feet by five feet deep. And that will be plenty deep enough to keep it running in the winter time. So there's our weir wall being built. Let's go right into there. All right, it's starting to look like a pond. Got a little ledge over here you can kind of see, make out. So we'll have one ledge on one side and then it kind of ends where the waterfalls is coming in. But of course, this has been the problem today is the mud. So got one more truck little mud to take out of here and tomorrow we will put the liner in. Hey, Phil, you want to introduce you? This uh, new guy is? Uh, Blake the Pond Princess. <laughs> <laughs> the Pond Princess, otherwise known as Blake Whitstock, my son, who has been working with Living Artscapes this entire year. It's fun for me to see the next generation, hopefully we'll see, enjoying creating water features. I love my job and I love my kid. So Blake, explain what you're doing here, my man. Aqua blocks. Okay. <laughs> and what is the purpose of an aqua block? To hold water. Not to hold water. Space that water a, a structural <laughs> void space, yes. So all of these aqua blocks that the guys are building right now will be the intake bay that will go a little bit unusual inside of the pond over this weir that we're building out of these timbers. So that is the start of day two and the finish of day two will be just getting the liner in, the aqua blocks in, and this kind of graded out and then it'll be ready for the team next week for the Utah moment. All right, buddy, explain where we're at. I'm at the quitting point, but... Uh... <laughs> How, uh, <laughs> how'd I know that would happen? So our pond is excavated out. We've marked out where the soft, squishy parts are. We have our weir built in. So where it's 12 inches, it's actually 14 and a half inches below the uh, edge. Yep. We have our basin excavated, tamped. The guys over there did it. We're dug out for our vault. So now we're going to uh, cut some underlayment, put it in and get this basin put in. Put the liner in, then put the aqua blocks in. Yes. All right. How many aqua blocks total do we get? So we're going to get 12 double stacks or actually triple stack, so it'll be too large and a small on top. We got a 25 by 50, so let's put the whole thing in and then cut off any extra. Done with the prep. What do you think? Quite a difference, huh? From what we started with a day and a half ago. So everything is ready for Utah Ammonium to begin. Today is Friday. We'll be out here on Thursday with about 30 or 40 people building the water feature. I love my job. All right, good morning, everybody back out here at the Waldorf Astoria in Park City. We got a lot done yesterday. At least got everything fixed and put back together. Um, it looks great. It is freezing this morning. It's really cold. There's definitely some frost over everything. 
but it's supposed to warm up. It's supposed to be up in the uh, mid 60s today, which is absolutely perfect. Met a bunch of people last night at Greg's house. Some old faces, but a lot of new faces, which always really excites me. I'm extremely tired. I didn't sleep so well last night, but it's all right. We're, we're gonna get at it. Ed and I stuck out here a little early with Greg Gill. Greg's gonna be operating for us. So we're gonna get this thing uh, all figured out. We have a lot of challenges. The biggest one on this is where are we gonna put 24 tons of stone? Where are we gonna put the extra gravel? We've got you know the the main entry wall the story here is right here you can't really blocking that because there's still guests coming in and coming out 30 people two pieces of equipment trailers trucks it's gonna be a crazy day and probably the first for me just as far as hectic and, and a little nuts but uh, we'll get going here we've got a bunch of people showing up in the next 30 minutes and, and we'll get get at it here So we're out here at the Waldorf Astoria. This is the prep work that's been done. They got an enormous amount of rain. The rain came off the roof down here and then it bubbled up all of our aqua blocks. Biggest thing you can do when you're putting in a big reservoir like that is instantly fill it because it's like putting a can in a lake and it's of course gonna float. And so if you don't get that stuff taken care of, it'll all bubble up. So we're gonna get in here, fix the prep work and then tomorrow is the big day where we'll put it all back together. All right, Brian, what is your assessment? Oh boy. <laughs> So oh got, boy, I'll tell you exactly what happened. It rained and the roof empties right here, which is underneath our liner. So I don't know if you can see this, but there is a decent amount of water underneath that liner there. Yep. So we're gonna have to pull all this out, fix this weir. It's not that big of a deal. We've we've made bigger mistakes. Absolutely. Yeah, it is a mistake, but we've made bigger ones. Oh, well, let's fix it. Nice. So we got a lot of the water out from underneath. This was the liner. We folded all of that back. All the sides were caved in. You can still see some water down below there. But because everything's being, like all of this is wet and things are caving in, now we're gonna put a timber wall in here. So Charlie just got here with some more timbers, some plywood to protect concrete and everything else. We'll get this timber wall in. That should hold back all of the soil. We're also gonna bring the timber wall up to the point of the weir, so the whole pond has a big, big intake bay over in this area. I think that makes sense. It'll make more sense as we put it all together. All right, so aqua blocks are in. Now they're properly backfilled with gravel all the way around and making sure that we lock them up really tight. Now over this, we're gonna put another layer of half aqua blocks, getting us up close to our weir height here. That weir height is set about 12 inches lower than water level. And we'll get into that a little bit later as we explain more of the intake bay. Obviously our vaults have to come up a little higher, which is why those extensions are sitting there. The plywood, don't pay any attention. It's just so we can walk across the aqua blocks a little easier. We're getting close. It's actually almost lunchtime and our rock is just showing up. Something new for us, which is gonna be new for you. This truck is actually a side dump. So all this rock's gonna come off, falling off of the side. We are so far behind schedule, but so excited because the rock is finally here. was your presentation going? Oh, our presentation was really good. <laughs> like, we had a nice little group down there. We were talking about bid sheets and designs and overcoming obstacles. And I think the whole overcoming obstacles is a huge part of this entire project, right? It From, is. Like, this is real world. We started off with reservoirs popping up out of the ground. Now you just found out where there's no water nearby. The stone guy mm -hmm. has a side dump, which is like unheard of <laughs> by us. And not only is it a side dump, but it only dumps off on one side of the truck. We're going to find out soon enough of it's even the rock we really want. I'm, I'm guessing <laughs> at some point it's gonna start snowing. <laughs> Odds are high. Cause that, Cause that would make sense. Odds are high. That was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I got a bunch of stone. Let's see what we can make happen with it. Here we go. Most of the pond rocked in back in there and I just picked out a big rock to put on the outside of the pond. Every now and then just a big rock coming out. It would look better dug down. But I could scrape it. I don't know. Maybe we, you want to dig it by hand? So it looks weird.
man. This is coming along, even though Rock showed up late. We're moving. We're moving. Yep. We're moving. I actually like, somebody was asking, what do I think of the Rock? It's not my favorite color, but I love the um, characteristics of it. You can really match stuff yeah, up yeah. really like nicely. Like, there's so many flat yep. angles to it, so you can do some fun stuff. So we had to layer a lot of stuff in here to get that height, and it looks all right. Normally, yeah. you don't like to layer that much, but no, I think it, I mean, but it looks yeah, good. This looks really good, and creating that little pocket. Really cool plant pockets, like off yep. in the distance over there. We just load up with like Creeping Jenny or Forget Me Nots, whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, I'm liking it. Yeah, the bottom, we could actually, uh, I think Mark started putting lights in. He, I think he got one. I think he got one in there. That would make sense. <laughs> we might need to get a, yeah. maybe a couple more. And then he probably took a break. <laughs> Where's Mark at? Yeah, he walked away. I'm at the quitting point. He's, <laughs> he's on another break. We'll have to get some to get the lights down here in the bottom. We could actually start graveling that. Right Look here. at the little baby Bernese mountain dog. It's called a puppy. It's called a puppy. <laughs> Seven thirty in the morning. We got so much done yesterday. And really what I want to talk about is just all the obstacles that we faced yesterday and how far we actually got. The fact that our stone didn't come in till 11 o'clock in the morning, we were still able to get all this done by five o'clock is pretty crazy. So this is the 1300 gallon intake bay. You can see our pump vault back over there, aqua blocks down below, all that water's coming in. This is basically all buttoned up. We got our plumbing run back over there. You can see a bulkhead fitting through the liner over in that spot. I still have to do an overflow over here, so we gotta figure that out pretty soon. Yeah, that could be challenging. <laughs> we got this whole edge done. We got a, kind of a beached out section over there, and we even got some frame rocks started for our waterfall. So the rest of the day, we're gonna spend kind of working on the waterfall, finishing up these edges along here, fix the plumbing, and then we're gonna do some of all right, so yeah, it's working on this edge, just trying to change up the monotony, getting that big flat rock in there, just gets rid of this necklace look we had right here. So just something kind of jetting out. Come in here, we got our bulkhead fitting through the liner. You can see where I put a piece of patch tape right here. The purpose for the patch tape is just to help with the rigidity of the liner. If I didn't have this patch tape on here, this liner would want to fold all over the place. This is going to be set up for our overflow. So I've got a threaded elbow in here so I can actually adjust the height of this overflow. I've also got some slack in the liner so I can raise or lower this according to whatever height I need. Our trench is dug back that way. So we're just waiting on some gravel so we can fine tune this and then we'll be able to button up the rest of this edge in through. All right, there's our overflow. You can see it's set right here. So we have it set exactly where we want it. We can twist it if we needed to, but that's gonna be perfect. We'll come in here now, add some little cobbles, get that all finished, and then you can see. Hard to get this thing looking pretty. Everything's looking really good. Mums for color. They'll last about a couple weeks, but good for our picture. <laughs> this is probably one of the hardest working build a pond day crews we've ever had. Like everybody's just go, go, go. Love the way everything turned out. Love the edges. Probably got 30 minutes and we can turn on the water. Stone donated five beautiful fish for the Waldorf Astoria, which is okay because people are always wanting to drop off fish somewhere. So obviously we're gonna redo this pond inside this winter. We're gonna put gravel in it. We're gonna add aquascape fish food with probiotics. But these fish are like the Jeffersons, moving on up. They're going to the Waldorf Astoria in Park City.
concerned about was the snow melt and stuff that comes off of this roof line right here. There's no gutters or anything, but everything's pitched right to this corner. And it's not just snow melt. I don't know if you can see this, but it is drip, drip, dripping nonstop. Every morning there's some uh, frost that forms up on top of here. And this, as the sun hits it, melts all that frost. And a little bit later in the day, this turns into a steady stream of water which was part of the reason that it heaved up everything up out of the ground when we originally built it. So what we did is we took some extra liner, ran it back that way, just overlapped it coming back into the pond. That way we can catch all of this water. It actually works as like an automatic fill valve for us, constantly keeping it refreshed. And more importantly in the winter or in heavy rain situations, we can capture everything down in this area here without it eroding away the earth or getting underneath the liner, which could cause problems or creating a big muddy, messy area. So just kind of like a dry stream bed overflow that comes into here. So this is our intake bay down and through here. It's definitely cleared up pretty fast since yesterday. Couldn't see the bottom at all. In fact, you can see all the goldfish down on the bottom there. So water moves across the surface here, circulates around and through here. Our pumps are right underneath this gravel area. We decided to go with a bunch of gravel over the top of the pumps just because of all the kids and people walking around this, making it safe, hiding where the pumps are. So there's no curious people looking down into vaults and that kind of stuff. Some great edge work back over in here. I think my favorite part of the pond is just these little nooks that kind of come back and forth around logs, around boulders, different peninsulas. Ed and I really focused on trying to fix the shape of the pond, the excavated shape. It's not exactly what we were looking for, but you can change that with rock placement and everything else. And then just backfill soil or backfill with gravel, breaking up the monotony of stone, 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 and doing like a little beach edge. And then of course the waterfall. guys we finished and we finished in a really decent amount of time two days rocked the entire pond in fixed the busted up uh, aqua blocks that reservoir um, built a waterfall did some really great edge work lots of machine work landscaped mulched the whole thing i think it turned out awesome but why don't i let you guys be the judge of that tell me what you think i think it looks great i love the fact that everybody that comes into this hotel here is going to be able to see it kind of temporary live that aquascape lifestyle and, and I think as the seasons progress and this thing's set up to run all winter long, uh, it'll be definitely a photo spot. Lots of kids will interact with a lot of the pictures um, taken near it. And of course, a lot of people just kind of gazing into that water, watching the fish and everything. <laughs> the frost that sits up on that big metal roof every night or sets up on that big metal roof so you can see how important it was to catch all that water all right guys so what do you think tell me your favorite part if you're ever out in the park city area make sure you stop by the waldorf astoria uh, they've got one cool water feature and it's a pretty pretty gorgeous place you know what to do like comment subscribe tell all your friends we'll see you next week Bye.